Hi guys, welcome back, Eric UK here. Uh, yesterday, uh, Sean Driscoll did a video about zombies, uh, asking about his favourite zombie games, books, films, and so forth. And I did a response on that, but I thought, you know, uh, this is a good opportunity to do a video uh, and give a bit more uh, insight to the responses that I gave. Uh, so the first question was, favourite sort of zombies? Mine has to be the slow shambling kind. I really can't stand the running concept. I mean, I don't even know who thought of that, but that's so unzombie like as to be untrue, really. Uh, and there are people who go, yes, but they're far more frightening than, you know, slow shambly, wibbly wobbly zombies. And it's like, yes, they are, because they're going to run you down, they're not going to tire, they're going to get you. That's kind of a given. It's kind of like in your face uh, horror. Uh, whereas I find the slow shambly ones, you, you get killed by those because you become complacent. Um, you get used to them being there. You get used to going about your day-to-day -day business. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you forget to lock the door or, you know, you leave something open or you don't pay attention to the, the numbers massing. And suddenly, that's it, boom, they've got you. Um, and I think that's far more frightening than the running zombies. Because it means you've got to be on a constant state of stress. You've got to be on a constant state of alert. Uh, that's a far more frightening concept to me than for, for a movie or TV uh, or game style zombie than something that runs. Uh, in real life, they'd obviously both be incredibly scary. But there you go. Uh, favorite zombie TV? Well, that's got to be The Walking Dead. I've only just finished watching uh, season two because uh, I did watch them on telly, so I've waited for the box sets to come out. Um, I really like it. I wasn't sure I was going to because I read something like about the first four, maybe five graphic novels. And I thought if they're going to deviate too much, it's going to spoil it. Uh, but actually, I've been really, really impressed uh, because you get the sense of the zombie apocalypse, but it's not in your face. And uh, because it's a TV series, you can focus much more on the survivors, I think. Um, but it does it in a very realistic way, I think. Uh, although I do find that the zombies picking up the pace a little bit, still fly, it comes too close to them being running zombies for my tastes. Uh, but that's, you know, I, I honestly can't think of any other sort of like TV with zombies though, so, you know. Um, favourite zombie movie, now that one is actually uh, reasonably difficult because I love the original Romero uh, Dawn of the Dead, the one in the shopping mall which was, I think, my first experience of zombie movies many, many years ago, when I was in my teens. I loved it. I loved the whole concept of that. Uh, obviously, I love Shaun of the Dead. Anyone who doesn't like Shaun of the Dead, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. Um, and the recent uh, Cockneys vs. Zombies, two very good ta British takes on the zombie uh, horror. Um, and there are loads of zombie movies now. Most of them I find are really cheap and nasty, and that kind of spoils the enjoyment for me. Um, but the overall uh, best one has got to be the remake from uh, 1990 uh, of Night of the Living Dead. Uh, Tom Savini, who did the makeup effects for Romero's uh, prior zombie movies, uh, I'm fairly certain he did Dawn of the Dead, I'm not sure if he did Day of the Dead, um, but he did a remake of the original Night of the Living Dead starring uh, Patricia Tallman and... Uh, Tony Todd and it's far far better uh, film than the original black and white one and uh, I think he's got it just right and that for me is my favourite zombie movie uh, favourite zombie book has got to be the Walking Dead graphic novels however saying that uh, there are two books uh, linked books one's a sequel uh, I think the author is Brian Keane with an E on the end, uh, and they're called The Rising and City of the Dead, and they are a very interesting take on uh, zombies. Um, pretty much it's a story of a group of survivors, um, but the pro premise for that one is, without spoiling, because this is right in the beginning of the book, basically uh, scientific experiments to sort of like f find uh, other dimensions. Uh, accidentally breach one of these and allow the spirit like inhabitants out and they possess uh, the bodies of the dead 
Um, so you've got kind of intelligent zombies. Uh, it all then kind of builds up and you learn through the second book exactly what is going on and who these spirits and things are. It's a very, very clever take, a very, very different take, uh, but well worth a, a read if you can find them. And then you've got Fade Zombie Game was the last question. Now, there are lots of really cool zombie games. There's Zombies, which I think is a good game until you start adding the expansions. Um, there's a game that a friend of mine has just recently got called Zombicide, which is awesome. And I'm going to have to try and pick myself up a copy of the new year. Um, which is a fantastic game. I really, really love it. Um, and in that one you've got uh, again, it's larger tiles, it reminds you a little bit of zombies, and you've got lar the, the tiles that you build together in various maps, and you've got various scenarios. Um, and there's a level uh, mechanic in it. So when you're, everyone starts off, uh, the zombies you get are fairly weak, there's nothing particularly major. But as you level, you start, uh, and you get experience points for killing zombies and achieving certain other goals. But as you level, once you breach certain points barriers, which are colour coded on the character cards, suddenly uh, the, mo the number of zombies or the type of zombie gets harder. Uh, so you're trying to get everyone to level together if possible, which adds a whole new sort of, uh, thing to it. So yes, check out the zombie side, really good game. But my favourite, and I really recommend this, is called Last Night on Earth. Uh, I think it's Flying Frog Games do this. And basically the idea, you've got one of these little towns in the middle of nowhere. Um, I can't remember what it's actually called it. Uh, you know, it's one of these it's in its little valley up in the mountains sort of thing, cut off from the rest of the world, and an apocalypse occurs, and you've got a handful of survivors, and uh, you get basically a tile in the middle, which can either be, depending on the scenario you're playing, a big manor house, or it's a big open green, and then you get L-shaped tiles, which are various buildings, which go around the outside, and you get different ones, you randomly draw them, and... Uh, Basically, depending on what the scenario might be, it might be you've got to survive 17 turns or something like that. Or it might be you've got to find the keys to the car and then get the car and drive everybody out of town. Um, but they've done various expansions for it which give you sort of like a special weapon zombies, those that are carrying a chainsaw or an axe. Uh, they're added extra hero, sort of survivor characters. Um, you've got uh, more powerful zombies, but limited. Uh, and they've done a recent expansion which uh, is supposedly up like the next town along. That they've, the survivors have got out of this one, they've gone to the next one. Timber. Re, timber blah, 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 something like that. Timber. Uh, timber. Re, something like that. And you can, it's a standalone game by itself, but it can combine with uh, Last Night on Earth uh, to give you more options. Um, and again, different scenarios and so forth. And that, Last Night on Earth, is my recommended zombie game of all time. Anyway, that's my thoughts on zombies. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope we coached some discussion. And I'd like to see what your questions are as well. Uh, your answers, rather. And uh, pop along and give your responses to Sean as well. So, until next time, take care and see you soon.